Aloha, my name is Dore Shin. I am the host of Finding Our Future, which is one of the Think Tech Hawaii shows. So today I have my really good friend, Anna Camacho, on, and we're going to talk about being young people, millennials, and what our future needs to survive and thrive. So Anna, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. I'm super excited to be on the show with you. Yeah, so we have conversations like this all the time. It's like <laughs> what we do for fun. And um, so, yeah, I just wanted to take us through, I guess maybe first you can introduce yourself and share a little bit about what you do and what you're passionate about. Yeah, for sure. So uh, my name is Anna Camacho. Uh, together, we co-founded the Good Food Movement, which is on a mission to make it fun make food choices that cause the least harm and the most good. Uh, we do talk story events, we do movie screenings, we do taste testings, ecstatic dances, so anything fun that builds community, and um, we eat good food, <laughs> pretty much. So aside from that, I also bartend at a vegan restaurant. I work as a tour coordinator for a, uh, a travel company, and. Yeah, I have a lot of side hustles, which is kind of the story of the people in this generation. Yeah, yeah. so let's talk more about that. So what do you think, like, we went to school together at mm -hmm. UH Manoa, and we were talking about kind of what the struggle financially is as a student and then entering our lives in the real world after that. So talk sure. a little bit more about that and your experience with that. Hmm. I guess it's the story that we've inherited after high school. We go to college and you invest a good amount of money that we don't actually have into an education. Um, but it's okay because we're promised that we're going to get good jobs and pay it off um, this really mortgage sized loan um, in the future. So, at least for me, that wasn't the case. Uh, uh, after college, I ended up getting a job in this tour company um, that wasn't enough to supplement. My lifestyle so I got a, another part-time job and then my passion project is what we do with the good food movement so it's made me really happy but I also um, work really hard for money and that's not a, a unique story you know in today's day and age um, so yeah <laughs> yeah so I think a, we know a lot of people that work three or four mm -hmm. jobs like that's normal and I mm -hmm. feel like that's crazy and I know that the local labor union here fights for one job should be enough yeah, and should. <laughs> there is a report that came out that said like half of people in Hawaii are one paycheck away from mm -hmm. homelessness or from some you know big big economic downfall mm. in their life and with their family and I think that really is amplified like with students and For sure. or you know post-grads that mm -hmm. enter their careers and say like wow oh, do I work for an entry-level job or do I work as a server at a restaurant which is not my passion, but that mm -hmm. will make, you know, potentially twice as much as that. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's like, it's like what a lot of young people have to go through and make those decisions. So how do you it think really that is. that affects people and their, um, the way that they move through life and mm -hmm. the uh, amount of energy they have to spend on, you know, other projects that they might be more excited about? Yeah, um, so I work with these people, we work with these people, um, and oftentimes when we're in the grind of the day-to-day, -day, living paycheck to paycheck, an emergency comes up, we use our savings, you know, whether it's health or something with our car or a family thing, um, we only have so much uh, resources that we, we, we accumulate as young people. So when these things come up, we're often back to where we started, we've got to start from square one, um, and when you're in this cycle of just trying to pay rent, trying to buy food, trying to um, pay bills, whether it's student loans, cars, um, anything. It's hard to get out of that one-pointed scope of survival. Um, when really, I, I personally believe like we don't have to be in that um, scarcity uh, mindset of like, I have to uh, just get what is good for me and not care about anything else around me. When the problems that we face in this world today, like we need to be outward focused and we need to realize like it's not all about us and um, we need to band together in that movement. I feel like that's what we're trying to do. 
Yeah, yeah. totally. Mm -hmm. So it's exciting. Like, I think we've achieved some level of balance where, mm -hmm. you know, we have financial, we have debt from being students, but we also yeah. have this ability <laughs> to have jobs that pay mm -hmm. us okay and balance out our passion projects. Mm -hmm. But, like, for most people, that's not really a reality. Mm -hmm. And so, and we talk a lot about, like, the climate crisis mm -hmm. that's here and, you know, going to become worse and with this perspective that we have as young people and millennials that are trying to work on social change mm -hmm. what do you feel like a lot of people want you know like out of our government or out of our culture that needs to change for us to start healing ourselves and healing the problems around us at a fundamental human level i think we want to feel connected to each other and something greater than ourselves. Uh, we need a feeling of purposefulness and meaningfulness yeah. in our lives. And just the basic need to be happy and have our basic needs met, which is totally possible in this time. Um, unfortunately, you know, there are some people that still don't have it. In Hawaii, we have a really large uh, homeless population. You know, that's no surprise to anyone. You go down to um, downtown, you go to Takaako, I mean, Kaimuki, any, any of these places, you'll, you'll see them around. By them, I don't, you know. Yeah. Um, I mean, houseless people, mm -hmm. you know. So it's just, it's just really unfortunate that, like, in this time of technological prosperity, we have so much information coming at us from all, all angles, and we know and have the resources to solve these issues. It's just not being focused on yeah. by, I feel like, our government and our leaders today. So, yeah. Yeah, so we were talking also about what our challenges and frustrations are mm -hmm. within, you know, being not only young people, but also activists mm -hmm. in some form or another. So, yeah, how would you articulate some of the challenges and frustrations you're feeling around our movements and you know, this deeper desire we have for, mm -hmm. for more change. Yeah, I feel like um, coming from the service industry, mm -hmm. I've been working in it for like maybe a decade or so, um, I, I work with people, like I said, that are living paycheck to paycheck, and then when they're so tired, we're so tired when we come home that maybe we just zone out on Netflix or we um, scroll through our feed, and it's this kind of, we're feeding ourselves information and um, becoming aware of things that really don't matter, you know? Yeah. Um, so I feel like if there's anything we need is to feed ourselves, you know, it's not, it's not the screen or the, the technologi technology that's the problem. It's maybe the way we're using it because it's just a tool. Um, so, like today, <laughs> I was on YouTube and I was on um, AOC, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's uh, channel, and she was spitting some real stuff that, you know, I needed to hear as a, as a citizen. And as a leader, she's very inspiring for me. And it makes me want to know more, it makes yeah. me want to get more involved um, yeah. with these issues because... As we know, these issues are very urgent to deal with. Um, I think it's about 12 years they gave us to tackle climate change before really the earth is unlivable, mm -hmm. um, which is really 10 years mm -hmm. before it gets unbearable, which is really, you know, let's say eight years um, before we, we can see some real change. Yeah. Um, but really there's a stalemate going on in government with this Green New Deal that's mm -hmm. been introduced. Um, and it's mostly politic, you know, mm -hmm. because the, this ac environmental crisis that's happening, it's, it's not political. It's a human issue. Human, yeah. <laughs> it's a very human issue. Mm -hmm. And we need to take care of ourselves um, mm -hmm. because the earth has been okay for billions of years. It's been through like five mass extinctions that we know of, um, right. where 99% of the species that have been alive are no longer here. And so now we have humanity, us, um, right now here in time, facing our own demise of our own creation. Yeah. Um, and it's very human created. And if it's human created, then it must be solved by humans. Totally. You know? Mm -hmm. So 
So, yeah. that's my piece on it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, totally. I think, like, our, our political system is, like, so out of touch with humans, and mm. that's why politicians like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez are so necessary mm -hmm. and important because what politicians forget is that, you know, young people, it's like we grew up with a lot of entertainment, mm -hmm. you know, so it's like we, we can see right through mm -hmm. politicians who are lying or acting or scripted. Absolutely. And so when a politician like AOC comes out and she's being really honest and straightforward and fearless. And real. And real. And she's, mm -hmm. she's energizing crowds mm -hmm. and she's relatable because yeah. she's been a bartender and she's our age. You know, I think that's what's really needed in politics. So, yeah. you know, not only is change too slow in terms of like what we're doing as individuals, uh -huh. but really like our political system gets in the way of the rapid change we need. And that's because a lot of our leaders aren't us and they've never been in this position they don't have mm -hmm. mountains of student or other no. debt and most of them are benef benefiting from the way the system is set up mm -hmm. um, and that system is destroying our environment so yeah. we really need to think deeply like how do we solve these big problems mm -hmm. and recognize where the flaws exist and what can we do as individuals and communities to dismantle or repair or yeah. heal it, whatever that is, but being willing to accept that it's going to be a big change. Well, what can we do to um, heal, dismantle mm -hmm. and repair and really heal this broken system? I, I don't know. Get involved? Get educated about the issues? Yeah. Uh -huh. I think, I mean, I think as a starting point, like, people need to register to vote, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, that's, like, the basic thing mm -hmm. you can do. And... Absolutely. The turnout has been really, really bad for young people because they do, they feel like the things we're feeling like, what's the point? And mm -hmm. like, it's all rigged and influenced. And that's part of the reason why Trump won as well, because there was a sentiment that it's rigged and getting a somebody new, even if it's Trump, was like better mm -hmm. than having somebody who's been around yeah. for a long time. So, and then, you know, people... People need to like get involved in an organization or in a cause that they care about. So like in the case of Good Food Movement, that like came from frustration. Like yeah. doesn't feel like people are doing enough or, you know, this is my passion and nobody's addressing it. Yeah. So it's like, oh, well, we'll just address it, you know, together. Mm -hmm. And it'll be beautiful and fun and inspiring for not just us, but for a lot of other people and have a really positive impact. So I think there um, is some level of empowerment that there's an opportunity to cultivate in people where yeah. it's like you can address your frustration directly mm -hmm. um, and channel it somewhere positive and healthy. Yeah, I think frustration uh, is totally necessary, mm -hmm. um, but it's not necessary to stay there. Like you said, channel it into yeah. creating something, whether that's art or like a song or a piece of music or um, a video or for, in our case like organizing events totally. um, making content on social media uh, these are all avenues and we have all the tools to reach a mass level of people right um, at our fingertips and I think it's so cool yeah um, but it's just a tool mm -hmm. and it's how we use a tool that really matters yeah. Um, so yeah I was I think there's about like 50 to 80 million millennials here in our country. Wow, yeah. And that's a big number, you know, and there's this stigma around um, young people that were like entitled. That's the number one thing. We're entitled and that makes us lazy and we're <laughs> always on our phones and yeah. we're always not present. Um, we don't know how to work. But I think throughout all generations, like that's been the story of young people ever. <laughs> Whether it was the hippies yeah. in the 70s yeah. or it was the Gen X in the, you know, 2000s. It's like, that's, that's or 90s, what, wherever they were. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're just young and we have to remember, like, or they, I feel like um, older people have to remember, like, where they were when they were our age, 21 to 24. That's a really um, weird uh, age between being so young and your values are shifting exponentially. Mm -hmm. And now at 27, we can say, like, we are not that person anymore. And we're ready to, to move forward and take action and be more outward fo focused and, um, take, yeah, be activists in our yeah. own way. And evolve and actually, mm -hmm. like, benefit the world outside mm -hmm. of us. So we're growing into that. I yeah. Think. yeah. This is that time for it. I work with a lot of teenagers, um, international teenagers with my job. And I have the same, like, 
stigma of, around them a lot of the time. I'm like, they're always on their phones. Yeah. They're, they're not listening to me. They're, but they're, they're doing what teenagers have always done, which is ignoring authority yeah, and totally. being there, you know, being awkward and horm hormonal and trying to find their way in this life. And yeah. it's um, expecting too much of them to be where I am yeah. or where we are right now. Yeah, you exactly. Know? Mm -hmm. Totally. So, yeah, I feel like young people do hold the key. Um, to the solutions because we inherited these problems. We inherited this world mm -hmm. like this was um, passed down to us. We have no choice. Like yeah. we must rise above um, our ourselves um, and realize how connected we actually are and how our impacts, uh, how our actions impact one another. Yeah, I think is totally. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, I think that we need to move to a break. Um, so I think we're going to talk more about how millennials can positively impact our culture and talk more about kind of our lifestyle and mm -hmm. the things we're learning and sharing with our greater community. So. <laughs> Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines. I was the head coach for the Punahou Boys varsity tennis team for 22 years and we we're fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. This show is based on my book, which is also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about leadership, creating a superior culture of excellence, achieving and sustaining success, and finding greatness. If you're a student, parent, sports or business person, and want to improve your life and the lives of people around you, tune in and join me on Mondays at 11 a.m. as we go Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha. Aloha, I'm Winston Welch, host of Out and About. It's a show that we have every other Monday on Think Tech Live here. We explore a variety of topics that are really interesting. We explore organizations, events, and the people who fuel them in our city, state, country, and world. We've got some amazing guests on here, like all the shows at Think Tech. So if you want to catch up on stuff, tune into my show every other Monday and other shows here on Think Tech Live. It's a great place to learn about stuff, to be informed, and uh, if you have some ideas, come on my show. Let's talk about it. See you later, and aloha. Aloha, my name is Duray Shin. You are watching Think Tech Hawaii, Finding Our Future. So this show will be about millennials, young people, and how we you know, make the changes we need to see in our future. So that everyone can thrive. So I'm here with my best friend Anna Camacho. <laughs> we are both the co-founders of Good Food Movement yes. and it's our passion project to mm -hmm. align our food choices with our values mm -hmm. and use food as a way to talk about bigger systemic issues um, in our society. So we didn't really talk too much about Good Food Movement mm -hmm. but why don't you share some of like the major work that we've done and then how that relates to your lifestyle, our lifestyle. Yeah, for sure. I think um, in anything that we do, we aim to build community um, and we aim to empower anybody that um, wants to join that community. Mm -hmm. And so it's very inclusive. Um, we feed people good food, whether it's from down to earth or some local catering or um, restaurants in the area. But we try to keep it as local as possible, sustainable um, and fun as possible. So we've done, the last event that we just did was a film screening of a documentary called From the Ground Up. It was about plant-based plant athletes. Um, we had some vegan, well-known vegan activists, James Aspie and Carly Taylor there to do the Q&A. Um, we had about 100 something people show up. Totally. So it was, a, it was, and it was at Vi Vi Collective, which is a really cool spot, a co-working spot. Yeah. And they're all about sustainability and um, keeping the Hawaiian mm -hmm. culture alive. So, yeah, it's, it's been two years, I believe. We've done screenings of Cowspiracy, What the Health. Mm -hmm. um, what else have we done? Oh, Island Earth. And what we aim to do is really collaborate and partner with other organizations and businesses mm -hmm. to make all of this possible. Because it's not just us. It's not about us at all. Um, it's about the movement. And yeah, yeah, I love it. I love it so much. It, mm -hmm. uh, it's really a passion, and it's my favorite hat I wear out of many yes. roles I play. Yeah, yeah, because it's like we get to create, you know, what we feel is needed and fun in our mm -hmm. community. 
So one of the things that inspired us to, you know, work on this project mm -hmm. is that we went vegan at some point in mm -hmm. our young adult life and we felt like there was a space in our community to really empower and educate people mm -hmm. and show that this lifestyle, it's not one of scarcity, mm -hmm. but it's one of abundance and that it's fun and that there's sane, young, cool people <laughs> who are vegan and yeah. um, that we do it for a lot of really important reasons mm -hmm. that could potentially save our future. So mm -hmm. what do you, how would you describe like your personal, you know, journey into veganism and and how that affected your life? Yeah, um, I started studying health in college, um, holistic health. So I started learning about the food system, I started learning about our bodies, anatomy, and what it really needed um, to survive, food science, and I just was realizing that most of the things we put in our body was not food at all. So I came in it through the health perspective, I went vegetarian, and we actually lived together for a little bit where yeah. you inspired me. Well, you planted the seed of veganism. I wouldn't say that I went vegan right away, <laughs> but I did. The thing that really propelled me mm -hmm. into it was watching a documentary, which is what a lot of people um, say their reasoning is. Yeah. But for me, this documentary was called Earthlings, and it <laughs> was uh, it was really hard to watch. I'm not going to lie. It's, I'm not going to suggest it to anybody that has a weak stomach, um, but it's free on YouTube um, to watch if anybody is interested. But it's about uh, human exploitation of animals on mm -hmm. all levels. So totally. not just food, mm -hmm. but entertainment, clothing, um, pet trade, yeah. uh, testing, all these things I was so unaware about. Right. And it broke my heart. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a signal uh, that change needs to be made. Right. And you had talked about, um, you know, making the changes that we need to make as mm -hmm. millennials and young people. But I, I really think it's being the change. Yeah. And that's the way we make it. That's mm -hmm. the first step. It's the foundation. Uh -huh. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. And that's, I think, for people who think that veganism is some kind of like fringe or extreme mm -hmm. lifestyle, it's like, you know, some people won't do it, and it's mm -hmm. totally fine, but I think it's really important, and part of, you know, our goal is to say, we're not, like, judging people who aren't vegan or mm -hmm. anything like that. It's really just, like, let's recognize, at least for me, like, I would, I used to say, like, I would never do this. Yeah. Like, this is way too much, and, like, I love cheese, and just, like, say all the things that a lot of people still say, mm -hmm. but to say, like, you know, even from that perspective, with an open mind, I was able to see listen to the facts, watch these videos mm -hmm. with an open heart, and say, this is not in alignment with my values, um, whether mm -hmm. it's from the cruelty perspective, um, or the environmental perspective, or the health perspective, and just say, this is, because this is not in alignment with my values, I'm willing to make these changes, mm -hmm. or at the very least say, I understand this lifestyle, and to no longer make it a fringe thing, something to be made fun mm -hmm. of, or something to criticize, but to really, you know, acknowledge the value that this, that the people who are choosing this lifestyle have on society because it means that they've had an open mind mm -hmm. and that they've, they've learned these facts and figures and said, you know, let's do something better. And that mm -hmm. I think that all connects to where we are now and where we want to be in our future is mm -hmm. we really need that open heart and mind, whether yeah, it's from do. the food perspective or, you know, any other factor of our lifestyle and our mm -hmm. culture and politics to say, we are going to be open enough to embrace change if change is what is what our values direct us to. Yeah, absolutely. And speaking of values, I think it's just important to know what they are for you. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people, myself included, didn't reflect on that. Um, and so it's important to, to just know oneself and yeah, speak from that real place. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, I. It's been a, I think it's just, that was the first step in, in the journey. Yeah. You know, like when, when, when I decided to go vegan, like I had no idea it was going to open all these other doors of information. Right. You know, like you start reading labels and you're like, what's that? And yeah. you're like, why is this cheaper? Why is like a burger cheaper than um, a salad? And it's because, you know, the government subsidizes like beef, you know, so, yeah. and like dairy and these, all these products. So it's, it just, 
it all connects, mm -hmm, totally. you know, and it sends you into this spiral of wanting to know more right. and wanting to be better and you feel yeah. better. Well, I felt better. And totally. um, it's also hard at times because as social creatures, like we want to be accepted. Mm -hmm. We want to belong. Like, I don't want to be teased by you for being different, yeah, um, totally. you know, so it, yeah, yeah. I think it's really important what you said it, to not make it a fringe thing, which it's becoming very trendy now. To yeah, be vegan. it yeah. is. So trendy. Some of the most like Beyonce and Miley Cyrus. Kim and Kardashian. Or many other famous people I don't follow, but yeah. I've heard that they've switched or they're advocating totally. for the lifestyle. So that's really exciting. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I really like to remind myself mm -hmm. is that every huge social movement, justice movement in the past, whether it's women's rights or black rights or abolishment of slavery, like any of these things were really fringe. You know, totally and it was fringe. like, you're going to kill our economy, you know, like, just like listing all mm -hmm. these like um, paranoid facts and statistics that were benefiting companies. Mm -hmm. um, almost all the time it was related to money and power. And so I think it's really important to be aware of when we or other people are defending something cultural or mm -hmm. something that's status quo that benefits a large industry because yeah. then that's when we really need to self-reflect and say, well, maybe they have a stake in this or maybe, you know, I've been influenced by mm -hmm. my upbringing or by my lack of being open to research yeah. um, to make changes or to be open to hearing what somebody has to share with me about what they've learned and mm -hmm. why they've made lifestyle changes that might be uncomfortable for me or for the rest of culture. Yeah. And I think veganism is just one example of that. Um, and zero waste is also another mm -hmm. example. So, you know, it's definitely a journey and you go from like plastic bags <laughs> to dairy yeah. to, you know, like uh -huh. to, oh my God, maybe I should like bike instead mm -hmm. of driving, like just all these things. And it's really powerful to be, to be say like, I'm, I'm going to commit to at least being open-minded about these things. It is. It's one healthy, sustainable habit at a time. And you build this upon brick upon brick. And then soon enough, you have a whole different lifestyle. Um, totally. Yeah, I know when we first met, like the first time we ever hung out, yeah. it was totally different from what we do now. <laughs> <laughs> Freshman year from college. Yeah. Yes. But it was, you know, but it's been amazing to see each other grow and mm -hmm. to support each other on that journey. Totally. And, rem like, reminding ourselves and each other that we're not alone in it. Yeah, in and this. teaching each other things. Mm -hmm. So, well, that's actually the end of our show. But <laughs> it was really fun talking. Oh. And we will be, I will be here every other week with a new guest to talk about our future. So thank you for tuning in to Think Tech Hawaii. Mm -hmm.